Journalist Jane Pauley broke boundaries when she revealed she had bipolar disorder back in 2001. She had what doctors called a genetic vulnerability to a mood disorder after being treated for a case of hives. Now she's speaking out about her diagnosis and why she doesn't like the word stigma. When I was 49, I was not bipolar. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 50, I was. Every time you say stigma, it is a reminder of pe for people like me that I'm fighting two wars. Yeah. It's not enough that I have a, a disorder that's mm -hmm. pretty serious, yeah. um, but I'm also fighting this front. So my goal is that we fight stigma, which is real, mm -hmm. but we fight it with sophistication. This was a remarkable special. Karamo Brown, friend of our show, was also on there talking about his mental health issues. Um, what I learned, and this is somebody who worked years with Dr. Drew, who's also a mental health specialist, I did not know that you could get bipolar disorder much later in life. So it just goes to show how much information we all, myself included, do not know. Yeah. Um, but I really applaud them for opening up. Well, and talking about the word stigma too, because stigma also indicates that it's a minority group. And generally when we think of minority groups, we think of they're at the bottom of the rung. That's the reason why there's so much need for representation. The reality is now that people are being more open, a lot of people, a lot of families are somehow affected by mental health disorders. So the idea of it being a minority population is much moving to the side because now people are getting help and understanding why they're ha having issues that they're having. It's so hard to get help though today. I have people write in all the time since I've been forthright about um, my depression and postpartum depression saying I, I, I can't find a doctor or it costs too much money or the only doctor in my network uh, has me on a three month waiting list. Meanwhile, I want to kill myself. So it's just to me, we have a long ways to go where it comes to getting those people who want to get help, yeah. help. And I, I still, I commend you forever for being that open, especially you were really in it yeah. at that point. I have to tell you, like I've been having the hardest time and I've told you a million times, I'm trying to find a therapist. I cannot find a black female therapist in anywhere. Wait, this in is something this. that you're going through? Right yeah, now? I cannot, I cannot you... find anyone. And I really want to have someone who can understand much like people are reaching out to you because they're going through postpartum and you were in it. And I want someone who can understand what my life is like. And, they can, and it's, can't they're find just that. so underrepresented. Wow. So when people are talking about it for a very, a lot of different reasons, I completely understand that. And I think that we need to have places and have like a network that's much better than what we have right now so that people can find people who identify with them. Yeah. Wow. Well yeah. said, Eric. Think about how many places you could go if you twisted your ankle. Like there's a two urgent cares within six blocks of here. I've been to both of them. And so, but it's so crazy that mental health doesn't get the same treatment. So yeah, let's hope. I hope that in time that it really does. Uh, we treat above the neck like we do below the neck. Let's take a look really quickly before we move on at this full screen. Anybody out there that is needing to talk to someone looking for help, please uh, write down these numbers or you can even text home H-O-M-E.